by the force it's finally here the acolyte has finally dropped its first official trailer and i cannot wait for it to arrive so let's break it down close your eyes your eyes can deceive you we must not trust them Tell me what comes into your mind. Life. Balance. I see fire. We kick off the trailer with a scene of some younglings meditating. We hear Jedi Master Soul, played by Lee Jong Jae, the protagonist of Netflix Squid Game. And this scene of Jedi Master Soul telling the younglings to close their eyes and feel the Force to collectively figure out something is kind of similar to the time Yoda asked younglings to help Kenobi find Kamino. He even says that your eyes can deceive you, which is something Obi Wan mentioned in A New Hope as well. Your eyes can deceive you, don't trust them. And actually, in a later shot of the same scene, we see an alien with his eyes wide open, so it's kind of funny that Master Soul is telling them to close their eyes when clearly this alien can't do that. Anyway, jokes aside, we then cut to a scene of a purple cloaked figure walking through a cheerful colorful street full of happy people. And this ominous scene of a mysterious robed figure making its way through the festivities really echoes the tagline of the show. In the age of light, a darkness rises. Sol asks his younglings what comes to mind when they connect with the Force, and in the background we can clearly see that the scene takes place in the Jedi Temple on Coruscant. So lucky for these kids, Anakin hasn't been born yet. The mysterious robed figure enters a cantina, presumably on the same planet, and we see a group of aliens happily chowing down as the figure walks behind them. And again, this ominous feeling seems rather out of place for the happy scenes that we are seeing, which not only harkens back to the tagline of the show, but also echoes Master Soul's advice to not trust your eyes because they deceive you. We may be seeing happy things, but underneath something sinister is growing. One of the younglings tell Master Souls she sees life, and in the background in these elegant golden robes, we see a female green Jedi. Now the Jedi robes are golden, as that was the common attire for the Jedi during the era of the High Republic, which is when this show is taking place, which is really there to show the Jedi at the height and might of their power, contrasting the slow decline that we see during the prequel era in the movies. And the character that we see in the background is Vernestra Rowe. Now, for those who are unfamiliar with the High Republic, Vernestra Rowe is a bit of a fan favorite character and one of the few who wields a purple lightsaber. One of the youngest to be knighted as a Jedi Knight at the age of 16, Vernestra is considered to be a bit of a prodigy among the Order. She's also part of a small minority group of Jedi that actually uses a light whip, so there's that. Now her story is far from finished, but by this point in time where the events of the Acolyte take place, Vanestra is already a Jedi Master and considered to be an Elder by this point. A youngling mentions balance and a third youngling mentions fire, again a sign for things to come. We then get to see Jedi Master Indara, played by Carrie Ann Moss, who some of you might recognize from The Matrix, and we don't really know much about this character except for this brief description telling us of her great mental and physical skill. Someone is killing Jedi. It doesn't make sense. What happened? I sensed darkness. This isn't about good or bad. This is about power, and who is allowed to use it. What we see next as this assassin attempts to kill Jedi Master Indara is a martial arts showdown, something which the show promises to feature heavily, taking a lot of inspiration from Asian martial art films with a lot of wide shots and tight choreography. 
A Jedi Master Indara pushes the assassin away and we get our first look at the character Mei. Now Mei is supposed to be a Jedi Padawan turned dangerous warrior and likely the culprit behind all the serial Jedi killings that we will get to see in the show. In her hands we can see two daggers and I wouldn't be surprised if these are Cortosis daggers, which is made of the metal Cortosis which is capable of absorbing high energy, which is why it can effectively deactivate lightsabers making it very effective against Jedis and Sith. Which would explain why Jedi Master Indara here is using her martial arts skill instead of a lightsaber to fend off the assassin. We then see Mei assassinate another Jedi and it is narrated by Jedi Knight Yord, Fandar, who we see in the next shot wielding a yellow lightsaber. Standing next to him is Jedi Padawan Jackie Lon, whose master is Sol. We then cut to another scene where we see several Jedi observing the forest and notice how the robes used by the Jedi here are all different shades of brown, which contrast the white robes that they ceremonially wear, making this more in line with the Jedi of the later eras. We then see a Wookiee Jedi master by the name of Kal Naka, and that's pretty much all we know about the character. We see Master Sol use the force to calm and persuade this man here, likely a scene of the Jedi Master investigating the scene of a murder. We then hear a narrator called the convict say, I sense the darkness. Which seems to suggest that whoever this is is also force sensitive, but we aren't too sure who this is just yet. We then get some more action scenes before we cut to Kamir, a former smuggler turned traitor. We then see a squad of Jedi consisting of Sol, Indara, Kalnaka, and still an unnamed Jedi. And what's interesting about the scene is that Master Soul's haircut has changed, potentially indicating a time skip from the previous scenes where he had much longer hair. Another thing to note is that in the background, we can see several figures holding bow and arrow, and the whole scene seems to give off the indication that they are all here to apprehend someone. We then get to see Mother Anisea, the matriarch of a coven of witches. Now of course this is not to be confused with the witches of Dathomir, this is an entirely separate force based order. And this is something the comics have expanded on greatly, which is the idea that there are other religions and orders that use and worship the Force outside the usual Jedi-Sith dichotomy. In fact, there is actually a High Republic issue that features Jedi as the site of the Convocation of the Force, in which different Force-based orders come together to celebrate or at least get to know various different Force traditions, and most of the time they really don't like one another. We then see Mei running through a forest on fire, which might hint at the idea that the youngling we saw earlier I see fire. might be the same character, and what we might be seeing here is effectively a time jump from the youngling scene to the present day murders, and this scene here is Mei's vision finally coming true. We see a starfighter crash, and while I'm not entirely sure what model this is, if we slow the footage down, we can actually see that it kind of resembles the shape of the Jedi starfighters that we see in the prequel era, perhaps making this an earlier model of some sort. We see Saul again with longer hair, and Mother Anisea talks about power before cutting to Mei, which makes it pretty obvious what her motivations are. We then see a figure in the distance, likely Mei's new dark side master, whose identity is kinda up for grabs at the moment. Now some of us might jump to the conclusion that this is Palpatine, but this is likely not the case as Palpatine isn't born yet as the events of the Acolyte take place a hundred years before the Phantom Menace. So potentially a revised version of Plagueis who we know is Palpatine's master, or maybe even Plagueis' predecessor. What is that? We see a flying red lightsaber spin out of the forest and we get a close up shot of a human hand holding it. Now the hilt is pretty nondescript and there's a chance that it might look like Plagueis' lightsaber, but my best bet is that this one belongs to Mei, who perhaps has newly acquired it. Besides, the hand is human so definitely not Plagueis. And it's going to be interesting to see how the show handles this as technically before the events of the Phantom Menace, no Jedi has seen a Sith roughly for a millennia. Now of course this doesn't technically include dark side Jedi or dark side users in general, but it's going to be tricky to keep the lore accurate all the way. So either they play the oh but it wasn't actually a Sith card or they will have to kill off everyone in the show who has encountered this character. The Jedi all ignite their lightsaber and we get a sick shot where they are all thrown back by the sheer power of this individual. Which just goes to show how powerful this person is, which potentially hints that it is in fact a Sith Lord. 
Another interesting thing to note is that the vast majority of the trailer seems to take place on the same Force planet, which might indicate that the Jedi are all stranded there during their investigation, which gives the Sith plenty of opportunities to kill them and to hide their tracks. Anyways, I'm super excited for this show in case you couldn't tell by the channel name, so what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. As always, be sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. I'm The Lost Acolyte, and I have spoken.